Welcome back to the series Building Web APIs with Azure Functions on Serverless Hub. This is the fourth video of this series. We have already set up our local dev environment. We will be focusing on creating a web API for to do items, which allows create, read, update, and delete operations in this video. Let's start from where we left off earlier. Let's go to Azure Functions extension and the function section. Let's create a new project. Click on the little folder looking icon. Select a file location to save your project. Then VS Code will prompt you to create the first function. It will prompt you for the programming language that you would like to use. We will use TypeScript for this project. Let's choose HTTP trigger as the function trigger. Let's name the function as create to do item. Let's select anonymous as authorization level. Let's open the new project in the same VS Code instance. Let's modify the code so that the function will respond with the request body as the response. We can read request properties from the rec parameter of the function. We can use res property of the context parameter to set the response. Let's update the function so that the context.res will be set to rec.body. Let's test the changes locally. Let's save the changes and press F5 to start debugging. When the debug process starts, the terminal window will show the URL for the HTTP function endpoint. Let's copy the URL. We can use a tool such as Postman to test this URL. But for this tutorial, I will be using a VS Code extension called ThunderClient. Let's quickly install the extension. Let's open the extension and click on new request and paste the URL in the URL box. Click send. The function will send back an empty response. That's because we haven't set any body in the request. So let's set request body. Let's send another request. Now the response body will contain the request body. Let's update the code to implement the actual create to do items function. We will create two models. One for the create to do item request. One for the to do item domain model. New to do item will have only two properties, title and the description. The domain model will have an additional ID property. Let's start updating the create to do items function. Let's remove this snippet. Let's add some input validation. We will only respond with success status if the validation pass. A successful response will have the additional ID property. If the validation fails, we will respond with HTTP status 400. Let's add few logs. We will log start of the function, end of the function and one more error log for bad request. We are using context.log method for logs. Now 
For bad request, we can lock the invocation ID and the request body for debugging purposes. We can improve the log one step further by introducing log levels. Finally, we will finish the function with statement context.done. This done method will clean up all the resources used for this function. Let's open the function.json. This is the binding file for this function. This function has a HTTP trigger and a HTTP output binding. We will modify the trigger binding so that it will only allow post method. Let's change the route property to be to-do item. Let's save the changes and start debugging by pressing F5. Let's go to Thunder Client extension and try sending a request. It will fail because get method is no longer supported. Let's change it to post. It will still fail because we changed the route. Let's change the route. It will give you a success response. Let's test our input validation. Let's remove description property. And it will respond with 400 bad requests. Now the only pending thing is persisting the data. To persist data, we will be using a Cosmos DB. And for writing data, we will be using output bindings for Azure functions. Let's go to Azure portal. Let's go to the resource group and click on add and let's search for Cosmos database. Select Azure Cosmos DB and click create. The wizard has already selected the subscription and the resource group. Let's give a name for our DB account. We will only change the capacity mode property to serverless. We will leave the rest of the parameters as it is. Let's quickly go over all the tabs. We won't be making any changes. We will look into Cosmos DP in detail in a different series. Once the review is successful, let's create the DB account. This may take a few minutes. Once it's complete, let's open the DB account. We need to create a to-do items collection inside the DB account. Let's go to Data Explorer. Click on new container and let's give a name. We will name it to do container. We will give the container ID as to do items. We will use user ID as the partition key. Click OK. It has created the new database called to-do container and inside the database we have the to-do items collection. Let's switch back to Visual Studio Code. Open up the command palette. You can do this using view menu or you can use the shortcuts command shift P on Mac or control shift P on Windows. Look for Azure functions at binding command. Select the command. It will prompt for the function. Choose create to do item function. Select out as binding direction and Cosmos DB as binding type. And then it will prompt for the variable name that we will use in our code to refer to the DB record. Let's name it to do item record. And for the database name, type in to do container. And for the database collection, type in to do items. Make sure all these names match with your Cosmos DB settings. Click on false since we have already created the Cosmos DB. Select create new local app setting and then choose the DB account name that we just created. Use user ID as the partition key. Now if we look at the binding file, we can see a new output binding there. 
Let's add a new model for the DB record. This will have four properties to do item ID, title, description, and the use ID. We will be using use ID later on to filter to do items by the use ID once authentication is set up. Now let's modify the create to do item function so that it will persist the data to Cosmos DB. We will create a to-do item record variable. We will set a dummy use ID for now. This is the important part. This is where we set the value for the output binding. We can set the DB record by using context.bindings.todo item record. This is the same name that we gave for the output binding in the binding file. Let's pass in the todo item record. Let's save the changes and start debugging. We'll go back to Thunder Client and send in a request. Let's go back to Azure and Cosmos DB. If we refresh the items query, we will see the new record. Let's go back to Visual Studio to make a few changes. Let's stop debugging. And let's add a util class. And let's add few util functions. First one is to get user ID. For now, it will be a hard coded user ID. We will update the index file to use this new function. We will add another function to get IDs for to-do items. We will be using a third-party library for this. Let's install the library. Open up a terminal window and type in npm install uuid hyphen hyphen save. This will install the package and update the package.json. Let's import the package. And let's return a GUID use in the library. Let's update the index file in the function to use the new ID generation method. Let's save changes and start debugging with F5. Let's test the changes with Thunder Client. If we send a new request, 
it will return a generated id and if we go back to cosmos db and refresh it will reflect the changes as well let's add a new function to get to do items let's go to azure functions extension in the functions section let's click on the function icon to create a new function choose http trigger name the function as get to do items use anonymous authorization level once the function is created go to the binding file update the trigger binding so it will only allow get requests update the route to to do item to get the to do items for a given user from the cosmos db we will have to use the cosmos db sdk we can do db queries with input bindings but in this case we have to set the user id from the code but the binding files doesn't allow that so we will have to write our own data access repository to retrieve the to do items let's create a to do items repository I'll be copying this code from my repository. I will leave the URL in the description box. The repo class will have methods to get items, update items, and delete items. Repo class requests Azure Cosmos DB library. Let's install it. Type in npm install at azure slash cosmos space hyphen hyphen save. Code in this class requires additional types. Let's install them as well. Type in npm install at types slash node space hyphen hyphen save dev. These types are used to refer environmental settings. Let's go back to the index file in get to do items. Let's clean up the code for the function. If we receive to do items from the cosmos db we will respond with the to do items If we don't receive any to do items from the db we will return 204 Let's mark as context dot done And let's add few logs.
Let's try out the function. Start debugging by pressing F5. You will notice a new URL in the terminal output. Let's copy it and go to Thunder Client. Click on New Request. Paste the URL and click on Send. It should return to do items with the user ID dummy user ID. Small tip on organizing Thunder Client requests. Similar to Postman, we can organize Thunder Client requests into collections as well. Let's put all the requests into a one collection. Click on the small three dots and select Save to Collection. Let's select Create New for the collection. We can do the same for rest of the requests. Let's create a new function for editing to do items. Let's go to Azure Functions extension and click on New Function. Let's choose HTTP trigger. Let's name it as edit to do item. Let's set anonymous authorization level. Once the function is created, let's open up the bindings file. Let's remove get from the methods list. Let's add a route property. Let's set it to to do item slash to do item ID. Let's open up the index file and change the code. We can read the to-do item route parameter ID by context.bindingdata.id. Let's get the user ID and validate the edit to-do item request. For validation failures, we will respond with 400. For valid request, we will persist the modified to do item properties using the edit to do item method from the to do repository. We will pass in the ID, user ID and the updated record. When we are using this method, we need to handle a special error. If we try to edit a to-do item which doesn't exist, it will throw this error. So when this error occurs, we need to respond with 404.
If edit to do item is successful, we will respond with 200. Let's mark context as done. Let's add few logs as well. Let's test the edit to do item function. Press F5 to start debugging and copy the new URL for edit to do item. Go to Thunder Client. In the collection, create a new request. Paste the URL, add a dummy ID, change the method Set the JSON body If we send the request only with title, it will throw 400 bad requests. If we use a valid request body, it will still say 404 not found. That's because the ID we mentioned doesn't exist in the database. Let's use a valid ID. Now it should successfully edit the to-do item. Let's verify that. Let's do a get all and we can see the updated record. Let's create the last function for this video. Let's go to Azure Functions extension. Click on new function. Choose HTTP trigger and give the name delete to do item. Choose anonymous authorization level. Open up the binding file for the function. Update the allowed methods. So it will only allow delete method. Update the route to do item slash id. Let's go to the index file of the function. And read the to do item id from context.bindingdata.id. Let's get the use ID. We can use the delete to do item function from the repository to delete the item. Let's mention ID and the use ID. Delete item succeeds, we will return 204. Same as the edit to do item function, we need to handle that special error. If entity with the specified ID does not exist in the system error occurs, we need to return 404.
Let's mark context as done. Let's add few logs. Let's save the files and start debugging by pressing F5. Let's get the delete to do item URL from the terminal output. Let's test the new function with Thunder Client. Create a new request. Let's give a dummy ID and change the method to delete. It should return 404. Let's get a valid ID. If we try with the valid ID, it should return 204. It was a long video. We created four new functions. We learned how to work with function bindings, used function context, worked with Cosmos DB, and we learned how to run functions locally. In the next video, we will add two more functions which allows uploading CSV files containing to-do item records and write them to the database.